Chapter 1781, Arahang enters the fray. Boom, 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 boom. A string of loud booms rang out clearly in the control center through the soul communicator. The thunderous explosions were met by sound silence from all those in the control center. The first air regiment had been completely wiped out. In such a short span of time, the first air regiment, which had earned countless accolades and firmly cemented itself as the premier air squadron of the Central Legion, had been completely decimated. Not even a single aircraft was able to emerge. Uguanzi's hands instantly balled up into tight fists, and thick flames began to bulge on his forehead. Never did he think that such a tragedy would take place, and he was struck by a bout of tightness in the chest. This was the best air squadron under his command. Had it really been decimated just like that? Only now did the thousands of laser beams reach the battlefield, where they sped toward the dark cloud, but the swarm of hornets instantly spread themselves out through the air. As a result, the laser beams were only able to strike a very small proportion of the hornets. Reducing an entirely insignificant number of them to grey mist. The 50 fighter aircraft of the first air regiment didn't even get a chance to self detonate before they were erased off the face of this world. This was far too heavy a price to pay this early in the battle, and Uguanti was struggling to come to terms with what had just happened. Deep within the abyssal passageway, Ghost Emperor burst into raucous laughter. Splendid. As expected of the abyssal bomber hornets, your brethren are unmatched in mass destructive power, Hornet Sovereign. At this moment, there were over ten people standing deep within the cave. Ghost Emperor and Infernal Emperor were among them, and the rest possessed auras that were no less powerful than theirs. One of the people in the cave replied, This is nothing. You haven't even gotten to witness the true power of the abyss yet. This was the ruler of the eighth level of the abyss, Hornet Sovereign. Just like all of the nine sovereigns of the abyss, the Hornet Sovereign possessed a human form, and the fact that she was ranked above the Black Sovereign was already sufficient testament to her power. In contrast with a normal human, the Hornet Sovereign's eyes were very attention grabbing as they were at least twice as large as those of a normal person. Furthermore, they were secular in shape and glowing with green light, and if one were to look closely, they would discover that the eyes were comprised of countless compound eyes, presenting a harrowing sight to behold. The name Abyssal Bomber Hornets had been coined by Ghost Emperor, and the most fearsome thing about these hornets was that their sheer numbers. It was the fact that they had a single commander whose orders they followed without question. The Hornet Sovereign was their sole commander, and to put it simply, each and every Abyssal Bomber Hornet could be said to be a part of the Hornet Sovereign's body. The Hornet Sovereign was like the Queen Bee of the Hive, communicating with her brethren through some special means, and all of the Abyssal Bomber Hornets carried out her orders with immediate effect as soon as they were transmitted by her will. The Abyssal Bomber Hornets had an enormous population, and they went all that fearsome individually, but they possessed two abilities, one of which was to ignite their own wings to produce a burst of instantaneous propulsion force that would push them over the sound barrier, while the other one was to self-detonate to unleash fearsome destructive power. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, the Hornet Sovereign would be inferior to the Black Sovereign, but in a battle between races, even if there were two Black Sovereigns leading all of the Black Empresses, there would still be no match for the Hornet Sovereign. Even the Sovereigns ranked above the Hornet Sovereign were very reluctant to engage her in battle as her style of battle was far too dangerous and insane. At this moment, there was some dark gold and abyssal bomber hornets flying around above the Hornet Sovereign. Each of them was around the size of a human head, and they were giving off cold and forbidding auras. Despite their limited numbers, Ghost Emperor was aware that all of them were extremely fearsome. Normal abyssal bomber hornets could virtually be instantly resurrected as soon as their energy returned to the abyss, but it took far longer for these golden abyssal bomber hornets to be resurrected, and there weren't that many of them in total. At the moment, all of the abyssal bomber hornets had dispersed themselves through the air so that the human army's long-range attacks wouldn't be able to fall upon concentrated clusters of hornets. They had a very simple goal, which was to keep all scouts from the human army at bay. At the control center, Wiglanzi took a deep breath to keep himself calm as he instructed. Collate and analyze the data that we've received. Soon, a series of statistics were reported to him, quantifying the level of destructive power that each abyssal bomber hornet released upon self-detonation. A single self-detonating abyssal bomber hornet naturally wouldn't be able to overwhelm a fighter aircraft's protective barrier, but each aircraft had been bombarded by hundreds of explosions at once, so it was no wonder that the protective barriers were destroyed. In the face of such a fearsome explosion that covered such a huge area, no amount of technical proficiency would have been enough to ensure one survival. According to our analysis, we discovered that the maximum duration of these hornets' acceleration is most likely very limited. Even some of the hornets that didn't manage to reach the first air regiment self-detonated after flying for a certain distance. So the best way to deal with them would be to wait for them to accelerate, then evade them and wait for them to self-detonate. That was the analysis from the advisor, but even the advisor himself was rather unconvinced by his proposed course of action. In order to evade the abyssal bomber hornets after they commenced their acceleration, one would have to virtually instantly reach a speed that was superior to that of the hornets, and that was clearly an implausible feat. The demise of the first air regiment was truly a heavy loss. The loss of the fighter aircrafts was obviously very sobering, but what was even more worthy of anguish was the loss of those exceptional pilots who knew how long it would take to develop 50 more pilots of such an exceptional caliber. Commander. A voice suddenly rang out from the soul communicator, and Uguanzi faltered slightly upon hearing this. As the commander of the human army, the only ones who could directly contact him through this channel were the commanders of the major legions, as well as the leaders of the major soul master organizations. This was a very familiar voice. It belonged to none other than Tang Wuling. Uguanzi was just preparing to issue the next set of orders, and he was rather displeased to be interrupted at a time like this. Is there a problem, Sector Master Tang? Leave the scouting mission to us, Commander. We have someone perfect for the job, Tang Wuling replied. You do. I'm sure you saw what happened just now. Are you sure you have someone suitable? Uguanzi was clearly urging Tang Wuling not to make unnecessary sacrifices. If Tang Wuling hadn't suddenly interrupted him, he would have already issued an order for the long range weaponry units to bombard the location that Bu Yuna had scouted earlier. Tang Wuling replied, Rest assured, Commander, I'm absolutely sure about this. If we can get your approval, we'll act right away. All right, then I'll be expecting good news from you. Uguanzi replied without any hesitation. In contrast with blindly bombing an approximate area, it was naturally far better to establish the exact enemy location first. Inside a cabin near the secondary tree of life, someone beside Tang Wuling turned to him with a smile and said, I'm going now. It's about time I put this body of mine to good use. Haha. <laughs> Tang Wuling replied with a serious expression, Don't get careless, senior disciple brother. Make sure to remain vigilant at all times. Arahang patted his shoulder with a reassuring smile. Don't worry, there's no one in this world capable of killing me. I'm off. He stepped out of the cabin as he spoke, and in the next instant, golden light flashed from his body as he shot up into the air like a cannonball, heading directly toward the core circle of the continent's northernmost region. No one was more suited for this scouting mission than he was. Abyssal bomber hornets, more like abysmal fire hornets, flying at full speed. Arahang was fast enough to keep pace with even the fastest of fighter aircrafts, and shortly after rising up into the air, he had already broken the sound barrier as he sped into the distance. Chapter 1782. High speed advance. All eyes, radars, and detection equipment were firmly locked on Arahang, and in the next instant, the perspective inside the control center switched to that of the portable video recording device that Arahang was carrying. On the screen, the scenery down below was rapidly flashing past, and a layer of faint golden light could also be seen. Uguanzi looked on with tightly furrowed brows. He was still reeling from the abrupt loss of the first air regiment. Is he really up to the task? Uguanzi murmured to himself in a skeptical manner. As the current battle god hall master, Guan Yue was naturally also in the control center, and he made his way over to Guanzi. If he's not up to the task, then no one is. Guanzi turned to look at Guan Yue, whom he was not actually very familiar with. Chen Zinji was far too influential a figure, to the extent that he had become the face of the battle god hall. While everyone nearly thought Guan Yue to be
equipment, he was completely inundated by the oncoming hornets. A string of deafening explosions rang out in rapid succession, and the large screen in the control center instantly turned completely white. The thunderous booms also rang out within the control center through the audio recording equipment, making it sound as if the control center were also being bombed. Wu Guanzi couldn't help but slap a hand to his own forehead in dismay upon seeing this. Hold on, General Wu, let's keep watching, Guan Yue said with a smile. Wu Guanzi faltered slightly upon hearing this, and he quickly also realized that something was off. The explosions were still raging incessantly with no signs of abating. If that man were already dead, the explosions would have already ceased. On the outskirts of the core circle, Arahang was situated within a massive ball of fire from all of the explosions erupting around him, but this ball of fire was still rapidly advancing onward. The surrounding abyssal bomber hornets converged rapidly toward Arahang to bombard him even further. But regardless of how many of them self-detonated, the ball of fire didn't pause. Even for a single moment, only wisps of grey mist were constantly billowing out of the fireball toward the abyss. These wisps of grey mist acted as a perfect guide for Arahang, directing him closer and closer to the abyssal passageway. Under the hornet sovereign's command, the abyssal bomber hornets continued to rush toward him in a frenzy, but all of their efforts seemed to be completely futile. A short while later, so many hornets had perished that the fireball had transformed into a cloud of grey mist. Within the abyssal passageway, each and every one of the hornet sovereign's compound eyes were flashing incessantly and independent of one another, making it appear as if there were countless stars in her eyes. She currently wore an astonished expression as it was completely inconceivable to her that a human's body could withstand this many explosions. How is this possible? How could there be a human with such incredible defensive prowess? Ghost Emperor was also quite flabbergasted to see this. Could it be a four-word battle armor master? But even a suit of four-word battle armor would be damaged by such sustained bombing. They really are sparing no expense in the scouting mission. Let me see just how long he's going to last. The Hornet Sovereign harumphed coldly. The Abyssal Bomber Hornet was virtually the most popular species in all of the Abyssal Plane, so she had no qualms sacrificing so many of her brethren. As long as their energy could return to the Abyss, this rate of bombing could theoretically be kept up indefinitely with replenishment from the resurrected Abyssal Bomber Hornets on the eighth level of the Abyss. A single Abyssal Bomber Hornet wasn't much to fear, but there were simply too many of them. Even more Abyssal Bomber Hornets had formed a series of massive swarms under the Hornet Sovereign's command, and they were speeding directly toward Arahang like pillars of green light as their wings disintegrated. However, no matter how many Hornets were detonated, the only thing that changed was the size and the density of the dark cloud around Arahang. He was still enshrouded within the gray mist, but that wasn't slowing him down in the slightest. In fact, the Abyssal energy around him had become so dense that the Hornet Sovereign was struggling to track him. The explosions drew to a temporary halt, and at this point, the large screen in the control center was already completely gray without any discernible details. Through the other long-range surveillance cell tools, it could be seen that an extremely dense cloud of grey mist was currently surging rapidly through the air. It could be said that both sides were in a state of complete amusement at what they were witnessing. As Arahang continued to advance, a series of figures finally rose up from the abyssal passageway to meet him. The abyssal creatures were unfamiliar with how humans waged battles, but the Holy Spirit cult was fully aware of what was happening. They knew exactly why the human army was so desperate to scout for their location and what would happen once their location was ascertained. As such, the strategy for the abyssal army from the very beginning had been to thwart all scouting attempts made by the human army. They went in a hurry at all as the longer they stalled, the more abyssal creatures would be able to arrive in this plane. They were also waiting for an opportunity, and this battle was basically going to be decided by a single showdown. Virtually all of the Dulaway Federation's troops were already gathered on the northern front, thereby creating the strongest possible human army to oppose the abyssal army. But at the same time, if the human army were to be defeated, then the entire continent would quickly fall. As such, both the human and abyssal armies were being very cautious, and neither side was going to reveal all of their trump cards unless they were absolutely confident in their ability to secure victory. The ones who had emerged to oppose Arahang consisted primarily of demonic enchantresses and black empresses, both of which possessed exceptional combat prowess and were particularly adept in aerial combat. Several dozens of black empresses and demonic enchantresses had already converged around Arahang, and a series of vortexes appeared in the air to quickly absorb the dense abyssal energy in the air. They had to locate their target first before they could begin attacking, and that required clearing away the obstructive abyssal energy. Right at this moment, the dense cloud of abyssal energy, which had already reached several hundred meters in diameter, suddenly underwent a shift. Chapter 1783, coming and going as one pleased. The dense cloud of abyssal energy that was surging toward the abyssal passageway suddenly drew to a halt right before it could be acted upon by the devouring vortexes conjured up by the black empresses. This was a very strange turn of events. Abyssal energy was a very special type of entity with no form or substance, so under normal circumstances, it wouldn't be influenced by anything, and that was the main reason behind why the human race hadn't been able to inflict any damage upon the abyssal plane for the 6,000 years prior to Tang Wuling's emergence. As such, it was an extremely strange sight to be seeing such a massive mass of abyssal energy suspended in midair. In the next instant, the entire cloud of abyssal energy suddenly began to surge violently before rapidly revolving to form a vortex. All of the abyssal energy then abruptly collapsed in on itself right before the stunned black empresses and demonic enchantresses, rapidly shrinking before vanishing altogether in the blink of an eye. The large screen in the control center also suddenly cleared up, allowing everyone to see the demonic enchantresses and black empresses up ahead. The perspective shifted and was directed down toward the ground, where the massive abyssal army could be seen, organized into huge orderly sections. Due to the disruption from the countless flying abyssal creatures, the footage wasn't very clear, but at the very least, the target had been established, and the coordinates were immediately transmitted to the control center. Immediately thereafter, they caught sight of a familiar face through the video recording soul tool being held by Arahang. Tang Walin was holding the golden dragon sphere, which had just devoured an enormous amount of abyssal energy and was radiating scintillating light. He then turned toward the camera with a smile and declared, Open fire at me. As soon as his voice trailed off, he shot forth as a streak of golden light, reducing all of the demonic enchantresses and black empresses in his waking gray energy, which was then devoured by his sphere. It's him. All of the powerful beings of the abyss and the Holy Spirit cult in the abyssal passageway were stunned to see this. No one knew how Tang Wuling had arrived, nor how he had appeared within that cloud of abyssal energy. However, it was clear that the entire cloud of abyssal energy had just been devoured by his golden dragon sphere. The hornet sovereign let loose a pain roar as three pairs of huge transparent wings appeared on her back, and she flapped them vigorously as she rushed out of the abyssal passageway. How had Tang Wuling shown up here? That was something that only he and Arahang knew. Right as Arahang was about to set off for his scouting mission, Tang Wuling had given him three leaves from the Tree of Life. Each leaf was imbued with the abundant life energy of the Tree of Life, and also contained the coordinates of life, which allowed Tang Wuling to instantly teleport to them as the son of nature. Even though the teleportation had expended some of the Tree of Life's energy, the abyssal energy that had just been devoured was more than enough to make up for the loss. Inside the control center, Uguanzi was stunned by what he was seeing, but there was no time to hesitate as opportunity these in battle could slip away at any moment. Lock onto the target and open fire. In the distance, the main warships of the three naval legions began to turn their giant soul cannons toward the same direction. The Northern Legion, Western Legion, Northwestern Legion, and Central Legion also quickly began to adjust their long-range soul cannons. A string of deafening booms rang out, and the first round of cannon fire seemed to have woken up the entire northernmost region of the continent. Even those in the abyssal passageway in the core circle could hear faint traces of the thunderous commotion. A stir immediately ran through the abyssal army, and at this moment, Tang Wuling gave Arahang a quick nod, following which a greenish golden halo emerged from beneath his feet. In the next instant, he simply vanished in a flash of light. At the same time, Arahang swiveled around and plunged rapidly down toward the ground like
force, and they accelerated one after another in midair to intercept the oncoming artillery shells. At this point, the Hornet Sovereign had already regained her composure, and she was hovering in midair while her entire body had turned a semi transparent green color. Ghost Emperor, Infernal Emperor, and all of the other powerful beings from the Holy Spirit cult down below could clearly sense extremely powerful spiritual fluctuations currently emanating from her body. Among the nine sovereigns, the Hornet Sovereign was definitely the weakest when it came to individual combat prowess, but the Abyssal Bomber Hornets possessed the most fearsome overall combat prowess, and the key to this was the Hornet Sovereign's control. The Hornet Sovereign possessed such immense spiritual power that she was able to accurately control the flight trajectory of each and every one of the Hornets. A string of explosions erupted in the sky in rapid succession, creating a formidable energy storm. Then came the explosions on the ground, sending tremendous shockwaves sweeping through the entire area. It had to be said that the Abyssal Bomber Hornets had been very successful in their interception, and a large number of artillery shells had been detonated before reaching the Abyssal Army. However, once these artillery shells exploded, the Abyssal Bomber Hornets became a lot less useful as they were completely unable to approach the fearsome energy storm. Furthermore, this was only the beginning of the human army's assault. In the control center, Uglanzi was issuing one order after another without pause, and the artillery fire from the seven legions was being seamlessly sustained. So what if the first round had been stopped by the Abyssal Bomber Hornets? The second round had already arrived. Thus, a comprehensive carpet bombing ensued, and a doomsday-like scene began to unfold in the core circle. Switch to the satellite signal. Uguanzi yelled. One of the screens in the control center instantly took on the perspective of a federal satellite, surveying the northernmost region of the continent from outer space. Just as Uguanzi anticipated, the artillery fire had scattered much of the dense mist above the core circle, allowing everyone to see what was down below. Zoom in. Uguanzi quickly made his way over to the screen as he carefully inspected it. The image was expanded, and a huge cave appeared on the screen. Due to the constant bombardment of artillery fire, there were many things that couldn't be seen clearly, but it was apparent that the cave wasn't being targeted as accurately as possible. Log onto the coordinates of the abyssal passageway, then adjust the direction of attack. Prepare ten ninth grade soul missiles to be fired toward the abyssal passageway at the same time. Uguanzi yelled in an excited voice. The orders continued to be issued and were instantly relayed by the advisors. Not far away from the control center, a series of silos were slowly opened, and ten ninth grade soul missiles had already been fitted into their launchers. It had been a very long time since ten ninth grade soul missiles had last been launched in unison in a battle. Chapter seventeen eighty four. Blood River Godslayer array. A string of violent buzzing rang out, and one ninth grade missile after another was launched up into the sky. All soul tools of the caliber of ninth grade soul missiles gave off an extremely oppressive aura, and the sight of ten ninth grade soul missiles being launched at once was like a harbinger of Armageddon. Enormous oppressive pressure surged toward the abyssal passageway, and at the same time, the artillery fire was also increasing in intensity, bombarding the abyssal army in a frenzy. Through the satellite image, it could be seen that huge plumes of gray abyssal energy were rising up into the air. So it was clear that the artillery fire was doing its job, regardless of how defensively it and longhorn beetles were, there was a limit to their defensive prowess, and upon exceeding that limit, they would perish just like anything else. Furthermore, not all abyssal creatures had the honor of being protected by guardian longhorn beetles. Amidst all the chaos, everyone failed to notice that a streak of golden light had buried their way out of the ground. A burst of powerful suction force appeared immediately thereafter, drawing upon the abyssal energy in the sky. Only when the abyssal energy began to surge toward the ground did anyone take notice, upon which it was discovered that Tang Wuling's golden dragon spear had somehow reappeared on the battlefield. It turned out that Tang Wuling had returned to the battlefield using the second leaf. There was no way he was going to miss out on such a massive amount of abyssal energy. After all, his sole purpose on this battlefield was to transmit life energy to the tree of life while weakening the abyssal army. If it weren't for the golden dragon spear's devouring ability, the human army could decimate the abyssal army countless times, and it would still be able to return in due time. However, right as Tang Wuling's golden dragon spear was beginning to display its power, a strange scene suddenly unfolded. A piercing cry rang out within the abyssal passageway, immediately following which a dense streak of purplish black light rose up into the sky. Due to how close Tang Wuling was situated to the abyssal passageway, he was able to see the pillar of light at very close proximity, and he was stunned to discover that its diameter virtually matched that of the abyssal passageway itself. Even with his immensely powerful bloodline and physical constitution, he was still struck by an overwhelming sense of disgust, to the point that his chest was feeling tight and he was overcome by an intense bout of nausea. Tang Wuling was very alarmed by this. What exactly was that pillar of light? Immediately thereafter, the purplish black pillar of light erupted into the heavens, then exploded to form a massive purplish black light barrier. How big was this light barrier? It was massive enough to encompass the entire abyssal army. All of the artillery fire was kept at bay by this enormous light barrier, preventing it from falling upon the abyssal army. This is bad. We have to get out of here. Tang Wuling quickly grabbed onto Arahang before attempting to connect with the secondary tree of life through his greenish golden soul ring, only to discover that it wasn't working. His connection with the secondary tree of life had been instantly cut off by this purplish black light barrier, so he and Arahang were trapped here. The ten ninth grade soul missiles finally arrived, and they bombarded the light barrier with tremendous explosive force. The light barrier began to tremor violently, and it was as if the very heavens were collapsing overhead. Even within the light barrier, violent tremors were surging through the area from the ferocious energy storm outside, and some of the weaker abyssal creatures simply disintegrated into abyssal energy that was absorbed by the golden dragon sphere. Tang Wuling immediately rushed toward one side of the light barrier with Arahang. It was clear that this light barrier wasn't just for defensive purposes; it was also designed to trap the two of them. Otherwise, it wouldn't have appeared at such an inopportune time. Under these circumstances, Tang Wuling didn't dare hesitate. He knew that they only had a chance of escape if they could take advantage of the period of time during which the light barrier was opposing the ninth grade soul missile explosions. It's too late to try and run now. An icy cold voice rang out, immediately following which a figure appeared before Tang Wuling's duo. It was none other than Infernal King Dulu Harissa. Harissa swept his Infernal King sword through the air, and a massive horde of Infernal creatures immediately emerged from the ground. The Infernal creatures were led by the Death Cavaliers, and they sealed off all avenues for escape. In the sky about, a series of giant green skulls emerged, heralding Ghost Emperor's arrival. Following those two came Dark Bell, Dark Phoenix, and many other powerful beings from the Holy Spirit Cult. Even though there wasn't a single abyssal creature present, it was clear that Tang Wuling and Arahang were in deep trouble. After all, they were facing a formidable lineup that included two quasi gods. Tang Wuling's golden dragon spear was still devouring an enormous amount of abyssal energy at rapid rate, causing his aura to elevate steadily. With the support of this abyssal energy, he currently possessed battle stamina comparable to a quasi god. However, he still wasn't a true quasi god, and both Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor possessed powers that were only slightly inferior to Yunning, so this was a completely dire situation. We've been waiting for you for a long time. You could have stayed safe and sound behind your allies, but you had to try and be the hero, and now, you're paying the price. The space within this Blood River God Slayer array is completely sealed. Let's see how you're going to teleport away now. A faint smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face. Do you really think you can keep me here with this array? If it were really that simple, why would I have rushed into this situation so recklessly? I'm sure you're just as aware as I am of how important I am in this battle. Seeing as you're all here, let me see how many of you I can take down before I leave. Ghost Emperor raised an eyebrow beside of Tang Wuling's confident display. What a cocky little brat. The nine skulls beside him pounced forward as he spoke, blasting nine strings of green flames directly toward Tang Wuling. Did Tang Wuling really have the ability to Away. Of course he did. Just as he said, he was very much aware of how important he was to this battle. If he were to
return directly to Shrek Academy, and it would take quite some time for him to return to the front lines. Perhaps he could then teleport himself back to the secondary tree of life, but that would require the expenditure of too much life energy, and it wasn't an option that he would choose unless he had no other alternatives. If it weren't for the trump card in the form of the tree of life, he wouldn't have rushed ahead in the first place. But at the same time, this was a trump card that he didn't want to use. Tang Wolin harbored even more hatred for the Holy Spirit cult in the Abyssal Plain. These people were clearly human, yet their ultimate goal was to destroy the entire continent for personal benefit. They were beyond redemption and deserved to die the most torturous of deaths. Chapter 1785, Unexpected Rescue. Forcing their way out of this blood river Godslayer array was most likely not a viable option. So their only choice was to teleport back to the tree of life. However, the Holy Spirit cult never failed to stoke the flames of vengeful hatred in Tang Wolin's heart, and he couldn't bear to just leave like this. There was still an enormous amount of abyssal energy on this battlefield, enough to support him through a grueling battle, and prior to teleporting away, he wanted to kill as many of his opponents as possible. With his and Arahang's physical constitutions, even a quasi god would find it quite difficult to kill them. Tang Wolin raised his golden dragon spear up above his head, and a powerful unyielding aura erupted forth. The image of the figure that had opposed Tang San on that mountain top surface deep in his heart once again, and his eyes were filled with a sense of unmatched pride, as if he were looking down even on heaven and earth. Restrict heaven and earth, Dragon Emperor fight. As soon as Dragon Emperor fight was unleashed, even Dark Bell and Dark Phoenix, who were both close to the limit to lower level, were struck by a sense of astonishment. They had witnessed Tang Wolin in this state through some footage, but at the time, everything had seemed quite inexplicable to them. It was as if Clan Yudongfang had suddenly become weaker for some reason in Tang Wolin's presence. However, now that they were facing Dragon Emperor fight themselves, they finally came to realize just how fearsome the pressure exerted by this technique was. This is a divine technique. Ghost Emperor exclaimed. All of them knew that there was no way that Tang Wolin was a god, but the aura being released by Dragon Emperor fight definitely wasn't something that a human was capable of exhibiting. Even though Tang Wolin was only emulating this aura, it was still infinitely approaching the godly level. His next attack was definitely going to be extremely devastating. In the face of his Dragon Emperor fight, even the quasi god level Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor didn't have the courage to directly attack him as they knew that doing so would subject them to the full brunt of this godly aura. Right at this moment, a very faint voice suddenly rang out beside Tang Wolin's ears. You have to get out of here. The voice was barely audible, but was rather familiar. Immediately thereafter, the ground beneath Tang Wolin and Arahang's feet suddenly softened, and a burst of suction force erupted from down below. At Tang Wolin's cultivation rank, his sixth sense was extremely sharp, and it was telling him that the owner of this voice was trustworthy. Thus, Tang Wolin made the snap decision to go along with what was happening. Thus, just as all of the powerful beings from the Holy Spirit cult were anticipating a devastating attack from Tang Wolin, he and Arahang suddenly sank into the earth and vanished on the spot. Even Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor were still affected by the aura released by Dragon Emperor fight, thereby preventing them from reacting until it was already too late. In the next instant, both Tang Wolin and Arahang's auras had completely disappeared. Ghost Emperor and Infernal Emperor were stunned to see this, and they immediately unleashed a fierce barrage of attacks toward the ground. The Blood River Godslayer erased defenses covered the ground as well, so their attacks were kept at bay. Where had Tang Wolin and Arahang gone? In the next instant, Tang Wolin and Arahang returned to the secondary tree of life in a flash of light. At this point, all of the limit duos were already waiting anxiously around the tree. They believed that no harm would befall Tang Wolin, but that still didn't prevent them from growing nervous as time passed. The Holy Spirit Duo immediately rushed over in an urgent manner. Don't ever take a risk like that again. What is that purple thing? She instantly sent a beam of holy light shining down upon Tang Wolin, and only after making sure he was unharmed did she allow herself to give a huge sigh of relief. Arahang turned to Tang Wolin with a perplexed expression. What happened? Weren't we supposed to be unable to teleport away? Tang Wolin was no less befuddled. Someone helped us by tearing a rift into the Blood River Godslayer array. Even though it was only for an instant, that was enough for me to contact the secondary tree of life and teleport the two of us back here. That's right. As soon as the voice in the suction force appeared, Tang Wolin had immediately sensed the aura of the secondary tree of life. A rift had been opened up in the Blood River Godslayer array, and he had used that to teleport himself and Arahang away. This sounded very simple, but the fact that their rescuer was able to tear a rift into an array with such incredible defensive prowess indicated that they had to be a core member of the Holy Spirit cult or the Abyssal Plane. The Abyssal creatures wanted nothing more than to have him dead, so there was no way that they would release him. But Tang Wolin couldn't recall anyone from the Holy Spirit cult he shared a positive relationship with. Either he had been surrounded by sworn enemies, so who was the one that had helped him? The voice at the time was extremely faint, and he had been struck by a sense of familiarity and a willingness to trust the owner of the voice, but he couldn't identify who the voice belonged to. After Tang Wolin recounted what had happened, everyone from the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy was also unable to think of anyone from the Holy Spirit cult that would be on their side. Even though Tang Wolin wasn't a member of the federal military, everyone was aware of just how important he was for the human army, and one of the main reasons that the Blood River Godslayer array had been activated was most likely to trap him. Under those circumstances, which member of the Holy Spirit cult would have had the incentive to release him? Let's set this matter aside for now. Fortunately, I didn't have to teleport back to the Academy. How are things going on the front lines? Tang Wolin asked. Cow Dadger replied, Not good. We failed to achieve what we wanted, and if you hadn't snuck in to devour some abyssal energy, there would be nothing to show for our efforts. Take a look. All of the long-distance surveillance soul tools were aimed at the abyssal passageway, and the massive purplish black light barrier was visible in the distance. The explosive power of the ten ninth grade soul missiles had already run out, but the Blood River Godslayer array didn't seem to have been damaged at all. Countless abyssal creatures were flooding out of the abyssal passageway, making the abyssal army appear denser than ever and presenting a harrowing sight to behold. The artillery fire had already ceased after it was discovered that the ten ninth grade soul missiles had proven to be ineffective. Even ten ninth grade soul missiles at once hadn't done anything, so normal artillery fire would just be a waste, and as a result, the assault had to cease. By the way, did you just mention the Blood River Godslayer array? Zhang Xin suddenly asked. Tang Wolin nodded in response. I did. Have you heard of it? Zhang Xin's brows furrowed tightly as an intensely furious look appeared in his eyes. Those bastards. No wonder they had to kill so many people. It was all for this. Even Cao Dudu was rather taken aback by his reaction. What are you talking about? Zhang Xin took a deep breath to compose himself and explained, I once came across an ancient tome that contained the inheritance of an evil soul master, and the final section of the tome contained some details about the Blood River Godslayer Array. Chapter 1786, Blood River Godslayer Array. The tome stated that a sacrifice of 10 million has to be made to create this array. Zhang Xin closed his eyes with a pained expression as he spoke. 10 million. Tang Wolin exclaimed. Zhang Xin nodded in confirmation. That's right. The blood and souls of 10 million people have to be offered up as tribute as a prerequisite to creating the Blood River Godslayer array. On top of that, it needs to be overseen by an extremely powerful evil soul master. This array uses a special core formation to exacerbate the resentment of the dead souls, then convert this resentment into energy to support the formation. As for the blood, it acts as a medium using which they can control the souls. Tang Wolin's eyes immediately widened as something dawned on him. Then doesn't that mean the residents of Shrek City? He couldn't bring himself to finish his sentence. During the Shrek City bombing, millions of people had perished, and the Holy Spirit cult had been the main perpetrator. Those millions of souls had all been harvested and injected into this Blood River Godslayer array. In addition to that, there was also the Heaven Do City bombing, that was the city with the highest population density on the
Ara Hang asked. A wry smile appeared on Zhang Shen's face. If only it were that simple. Following the formation of the array, its core is its overseer, and the array will move alongside its core. Hence, we're going to be facing a direct assault from the Abyssal Army and the Blood River Godslayer array. The most terrifying thing about all of this is that if we suffer too many casualties, there's a very good chance that Demon Sovereign will be able to forcibly elevate themselves to Godhood through slaughter. Everyone's expressions changed drastically upon hearing this. The prospect of the Holy Lord potentially descending upon the Duo plane was already extremely concerning. If Demon Sovereign could elevate themselves to Godhood as well, then this battle would be as good as lost. Report. Long Yachu quickly made her way into the room, and she heaped an internal sigh of relief upon catching sight of Tang Wulin. The control center is inviting Sect Master Tang and the esteemed Heartless Duo for a meeting. Tang Wulin and Kao Dadju exchanged a glance upon hearing this, and both of them had an inkling of what this meeting was going to be about. However, there was no time for speculation, and the two of them immediately made their way to the control center without delay. The atmosphere inside the control center was very heavy, and all of the military officials in the room wore grim expressions. The battle had only just begun, yet they had been forced to cease their assault due to the astonishing defensive might of the Blood River God Slayer array. Even 10 ninth grade soul missiles had been unable to breach it. There was no way to stack the explosive power of soul missiles, so they could only attack the array from different angles, but that clearly wasn't going to work. Furthermore, ninth grade soul missiles were already the most powerful weapons normally allocated to federal legions. The situation is very dire. If I'm not mistaken, there's a very good chance the light barrier is something known as the Blood River Godslayer Array. Chen Zinji said with a grim expression. The fact that Chen Zinji was aware of this array indicated that all of the military officials in the room were most likely already aware of the Blood River Godslayer Array's power. Sure enough, Chen Zinji gave everyone a description of what the array was capable of, and his description was even more detailed than the one provided by Zhangshan. The Blood River Godslayer Array will become more and more powerful the more souls it devours, and that power will be reciprocated to its overseer. If that person is Demon Sovereign, then there's a very good chance they'll ascend to Godhood with the array's assistance. Even if they don't succeed, they'll be infinitely approaching the godly level, and with current technology, there won't be any way to stop them. Chen Zinji's expression had become very grim. No one wanted to face such a fearsome enemy, and just as he had said, the situation was indeed very dire. With Guan Zhi's I didn't think that the destructive capabilities of our weapons would be so sorely lacking. What if we use heavy iron laser weapons? Guan Yue asked. Extensive calculations have been made, and the conclusion is that heavy iron laser weapons may be able to pierce through the array to strike some of the abyssal creatures inside, but it won't be able to break the array. On top of that, high intensity heavy iron lasers have a very limited range, and the amount of damage they can inflict is also rather lackluster. Ninth grade soul missiles were already the most fearsome of the regulation weapons, even though soul weaponry had diversified significantly over the years. Not many improvements have been made when it came to the peak destructive weapons. Developments in this area had been attempted during the creation of the Godslayer missiles, but all projects of this nature had to be terminated due to excessive resource expenditure. The research and source positive circulation cause was heading in the right direction, but it required too many uncommon metals to sustain. Even the tank sect was only able to craft a single divine grade maker with this technology. Guanzi turned his gaze toward Tang Wulin as he spoke. We'll only be able to break this Blood River Godslayer array if we can deploy an even more powerful soul weapon, and we must do this as soon as possible. Tang Wulin's expression remained unchanged, but he knew that he had guessed right. Guanzi was clearly implying that the deployment of eternal heaven was necessary, and that was why Tang Wulin and Kao Dajia had been invited to attend this meeting. The Tang Sect and Shrek Academy had gone to great lengths to obtain eternal heaven, and it was the key to their steady development. With eternal heaven in their possession, neither the Federation nor the Spirit Pagoda would dare to do anything to them. So Tang Wulin was very reluctant to offer the weapon to the military. However, if he refused, how were they going to break the Blood River Godslayer array? It was simply far too difficult to break the array through the power of individuals. With that in mind, Tang Wulin turned to Kao Dajia, who was also looking back at him, and their eyes met. Tang Wulin pursed his lips and gave a reluctant nod. There will be a sufficiently powerful weapon soon. Chapter 1787: Evolution of the Tree of Life. Guanzi's eyes lit up upon hearing this, and even Kaiyangu Dongfang's expression changed slightly as he appraised Tang Wulin. Everyone knew exactly what eternal heaven entailed. For an organization, owning such a weapon was essentially like owning a permanent get out of jail free card. Kaiyangu Dongfang knew that if he were in Tang Wulin's shoes, he would come up with all types of excuses to placate Guanzi and would only offer up the missile when there was absolutely no other alternative. Considering what the Tang Sect had always stood for, he knew that there was a very good chance they would offer up the missile, but he didn't think that Tang Wulin would be so decisive about it. He didn't seem to have hesitated at all. Nor did he try to delay the decision, and that came as quite a surprise to Kaiyangu Dongfang. After making this decision, Tang Wulin's expression remained largely unchanged. He couldn't afford to hesitate at a time like this. Even the slightest hesitation could afford the abyssal plane and the Holy Spirit cult an opportunity to invade the continent, resulting in the demise of countless people. And in that situation, he would be indirectly responsible for such a disaster. Perhaps eternal heaven was being put to perfect use on the abyssal plane and the Holy Spirit cult. Thus, he had immediately made the decision without much thought. On the way here, he had already carefully considered how he was going to respond to such a request. If the Blood River Godslayer array didn't exist, he would obviously try to turn down the request. But after witnessing the array's formidable power, that was no longer an option for him. Perhaps eternal heaven really was the only thing that could break the array. Kao Dajia gave Tang Wulin a slight nod of approval. He was obviously also very reluctant to hand over eternal heaven. But what else could they do? Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect weren't like the Spirit Pagoda. They couldn't be so selfish and only think about themselves. Besides, how could the Tang Sect and the Shrek Academy continue to exist if the entire continent would fall? Uguanzi was clearly deeply moved by this decision, as was Chen Zinji. The fact that eternal heaven was in the hands of Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect couldn't be made known to everyone, so Uguanzi could only mention the matter implicitly. In his eyes, Tang Wulin would have at least had to go back to discuss the matter with everyone else. But he hadn't done that. This was the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy. For the past 20,000 years, they had always stood on the side of justice and morality. The rest of the meeting quickly passed by, and at the end, Uguanzi and Chen Zinji asked Tang Wulin and Kao Dajia to stay behind. All of the advisors and everyone else had been instructed to vacate the room. Chen Zinji and Uguanzi exchanged a glance before both of them suddenly stood up straight and extended a military salute toward Tang Wulin and Kao Dajia. Thank you. Guanzi seemed to only be able to barely keep his emotions in check. As one of the members of the military stop brass, he knew exactly what eternal heaven entailed. Tang Wulin sighed, we're only doing what's to be expected of us. In the face of such a major crisis, all selfishness must be set aside. There's no need to thank us. I'll return to Shrek Academy right away and be back with eternal heaven in a day at most. Guanzi said, if the Tang sect or Shrek Academy ever needs any favors from myself or my family, feel free to approach me. From now on, the Central Legion will be your closest ally. For someone of Guanzi's status to make such a declaration indicated that a very large section of the military was going to be supporting Shrek Academy and the Tang sect from now on. That's also what I wanted to say, Chen Zinji said as he appraised Tang Wulin with unadulterated approval in his eyes. Yang Ming chose the right successor, and as did you, old man Cao. I must admit that I really envy you. From now on, the Battle God Hall and the Sea God Legion will also be close allies of the Tang sect and Shrek Academy. In the past, he only had a personal connection with Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect due to his relationship with Wang Yeyu, but in the wake of Tang Wulin's decision to hand over Eternal Heaven, he had chosen to fully side with the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy. Among the three leading figures in the
brain, and his entire body instantly turned a translucent green color. Rich life energy began to emanate from his body, and the entire surrounding area was suddenly filled with vitality as Chen Jinji and Uguanzi looked on with amazement in their eyes. They were naturally aware that Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect had some special tricks up their sleeves, and it had been quite shocking for them witnessing Tang Wulin advancing and retreating on the battlefield as he pleased. However, it was the first time they were seeing this for the first time, and they couldn't help but wonder if this color of life energy was really something that a human could be exhibiting. Before they had a chance to think about this any further, Tang Wulin had already vanished amid a flash of green light. Let's discuss the battle plan next. Prior to the destruction of the Blood River Godslayer array, all we can do is hold the fort. At the Sea God's Lake, Tang Wulin found himself immersed in a warm sensation, and when he opened his eyes, he was already deep underwater. A light barrier had formed naturally around him to keep the water of the lake at bay, and he was instantly struck by a sense of closeness with the tree of life that stood up ahead. However, seeing the tree of life gave him quite a shock as the tree had undergone some changes since his departure. In the past, the trunk of the tree of life hadn't looked much different from that of a normal tree, but there was a clear difference now. The entire tree of life was glowing with faint golden light, and this light was surging toward Tang Wulin in the form of rich life energy, warming his entire body. Even the surrounding water of the lake had been illuminated a bluish golden color. Furthermore, the tree of life had become even more massive. The top of its canopy was already close to the surface of the lake. Its leaves were also giving off faint golden light, and some of the leaves' veins seemed to be turning golden. As the son of nature, Tang Wulin was immediately struck by the impression that the tree of life was about to evolve. Tang Wulin was ecstatic to see this, and he immediately focused on transmitting a question toward it. The tree of life quickly gave a response, but it wasn't very clear, indicating that it was currently not in a very lucid state of mind. However, it had definitively told Tang Wulin that it was indeed undergoing evolution, and that the evolution process would be complete once all of its leaves turned golden. Chapter 1788. Wing Zichen's conditions. The process would evolve the tree of life into the golden tree, recovering it to its former glory. In fact, due to the fact that the tree of life had been reborn, it would only become superior to the old golden tree following its evolution. By the time the evolution was complete, the canopy of the tree would also emerge out of the lake. This was fantastic news, and Tang Wulin was ecstatic to hear it. At the same time, the tree of life told him that the primary catalyst behind this evolution was the enormous amount of life energy Tang Wulin had transmitted back to it. The nourishing effect that devouring abyssal energy had on the tree of life was very pronounced, and the higher the caliber of the abyssal creature, the higher the level of abyssal energy they possessed. The tree of life required more energy like this to facilitate its evolution, so it was asking Tang Wulin to devour more abyssal energy for it where possible. I'll be sure to do my best. After extending a respectful bow toward the tree of life, Tang Wulin emerged from the lake before rising up into the air. Just as he was flying toward the main school building, he noticed another change. To his surprise, the bare and barren banks of the sea gods lake were now teeming with greenery, and the thriving plants were none other than the blue silver grass that he was most familiar with. His own martial soul was blue silver emperor, so he was naturally very excited to see so much blue silver grass. Upon sensing his aura, the blue silver grass would all involuntarily sway in his direction. Looking down from above, Tang Wulin could see a huge light blue circle around the giant sea gods lake. In contrast with normal blue silver grass, the blue silver grass here was more translucent, and it gave off a faint silver hue under the illumination of sunlight. The moist and refreshing air carried with it the faint fragrance of plants, and Tang Wulin felt as if he were in paradise. An indescribable sense of emotion welled up in his heart, further feeling his determination to protect Shrek Academy and the continent from forces of evil. He pulled out his soul communicator before dialing a number, and a familiar voice quickly rang out on the entire end of the line. What's up? I'm back. Where are you right now? Tang Wulin asked. You're back already. Did something happen on the front lines? The voice on the other end asked in a concerned manner. I'm fine. I'll tell you about it face to face. Five minutes later, Tang Wulin arrived before Ling Zichen. Many of Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect's most powerful beings had departed, so Ling Zichen was looking after things in Shrek City. With her presence, all of the soul defense systems could be activated at a moment's notice, so there was no need to fear any surprise attacks. What? You want to take eternal heaven? No, that's unacceptable. Ling Zichen's voice had instantly spiked up a few octaves. Recently, she had been working hard to change herself, working hard on making herself more gentle and approachable, especially in the presence of Tang Wulin. However, eternal heaven was her reverse scale, and the mere mention of it being taken away immediately made her revert back to her mad scientist persona. Tang Wulin sighed. Listen to me, Zichen. The entire continent is about to face a major crisis, so this isn't just about our Tang Sect and Shrek Academy anymore. Eternal heaven is perhaps the only thing that can destroy the Blood River Godslayer array, and nothing must be destroyed. So there are no other alternatives available to us. Ever since Ling Zichen had begun studying Eternal Heaven, her research had been progressing by leaps and bounds. Eternal Heaven was a masterpiece created by many generations of the most brilliant scientists, and it had given her tremendous inspiration. Then what if it fails to break the array? Ling Zichen protested. She really couldn't bear to part with Eternal Heaven. The deeper she studied the missile, the more she came to understand just how incredibly amazing it was. It was an absolute marvel of scientific engineering that such an enormous amount of power had been concentrated in such a small soul missile. For her, studying Eternal Heaven was immensely beneficial. Furthermore, in the eyes of scientists, this wasn't a weapon. It was an artistic masterpiece of technological excellence. When Ling Zichen first got a hold of Eternal Heaven, she had slept by its side for the first half a month, and almost every night she was giggling herself awake. The prospect of having Eternal Heaven taken away immediately brought tears to her eyes. I'm sorry, Zichen, but we have to use it. Even if it doesn't work, we still have to try. Otherwise, there's a very good chance that the Blood River Godslayer array will create a god, and if that happens, the entire continent will face destruction. I can understand what you're feeling, but we have to look at the greater good, and there's simply no other choice. Please go and the missile. Ling Zichen glowed intently at him with tears swimming in his eyes, displaying no intention to move. Tang Wulin opened his mouth to say something, but couldn't bring himself to say anything further at the sight of her pitiable display. Just as he made up his mind and was about to take a more assertive stance, Ling Zichen suddenly threw her arms around him and burst into tears. I don't want to give up eternal heaven. My mother and father were involved in its creation. Seeing it is like seeing my parents, like having them by my side. I really don't want to give it up. Please don't take it away. I'm begging you. Tears also welled up in Tang Wulin's eyes upon hearing this, and he gently returned Ling Zichen's embrace. He could fully empathize with what she was feeling. Back when his foster parents had vanished, he had dreamt of them countless times, and their absence was like a void in his heart. In the wake of their deaths, he would have perhaps already had a mental breakdown had his birth father not appeared to give him a glimmer of hope. Ling Zichen's parents had already passed away, and eternal heaven was like a psychological pillow for her, so he knew exactly how she felt, but what else could he do? He gently patted Ling Zichen's back and consoled, I'm sorry, Zichen, but we have no choice. Your parents would have wanted to see their creation be used to protect the continent as well, so perhaps this is the best outcome. Perhaps we'll never be able to develop another weapon like Eternal Heaven again. At the very least, it's better for a weapon of such massive destructive capability to be used on a battlefield than to act as a constant threat that could exploit at any time elsewhere on the continent. Even after Eternal Heaven ceases to exist, the technology left behind by your parents will live on, and that's what you should remember them by. Ling Zichen's body was shaking with sobs, but she discovered that she felt very safe in Tang Wulin's embrace. All of a sudden, she raised her head to look up at Tang Wulin. You have to agree to two of my conditions. Go on, Tang Wulin sighed. Under these circumstances, he had to satisfy virtually any request that Ling Zichen had. Firstly, you have to take me with you. Only in my hands can Eternal
It wasn't easy to extract blood from Tang Wuling in his current form. His body was almost as powerful as Arahang's invincible badger body, and unless a divine weapon was used, it would be virtually impossible to leave so much as a single scratch on him. Particularly when he was always using his golden dragon body to further bolster his defense in battle. Ten minutes later, the tears in Ling Zichen's eyes were gone, and she was examining some blood inside a test tube with an amazed expression, looking at the intense interest in her eyes. Tang Wuling was left feeling rather speechless. Weren't her emotions fluctuating a little too quickly? The blood had been extracted from his hands through a small gash inflicted by the golden dragon spear, and it was very much different from the blood of a normal person. The blood was of a reddish golden color and seemed to possess life force of its own. It was constantly writing and twisting inside the test tube, looking more like a solid than a liquid. Even for Tang Wuling, this was the first time he was seeing his own blood, and he could vaguely sense the golden dragon king orange within the blood. It was no wonder that Ling Zichen was so excited. This was the first time she had seen blood that was capable of moving on its own. Furthermore, she had certain ulterior motives. She took a furtive glance at Tang Wuling to find that he was appraising her with a perplexed expression, and she hurriedly shifted her gaze elsewhere as a warm smile appeared on her face. Tang Wuling couldn't help but shudder at the sight of her benevolent smile. For some reason, he couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't quite right. What kind of research do you want to do with my blood? Tang Wuling asked. Ling Zichen immediately put on a serious expression and replied, I want to research its genetic makeup. Of course, if we can develop some genetic medicines capable of enhancing one's powers using your blood, then our Tang sect will be able to make money even faster than the spirit pagoda. Tang Wuling was left feeling rather speechless upon hearing this, and before he could ask any further questions, Ling Zichen said, Wait for me here, I'll go get eternal heaven. Thus, Ling Zichen made her way to the research institute in Shrek Academy on her own. This research center had been founded by her, and following some discussion with Shrek Academy, Ling Zichen intended to add a new technological subject to Shrek Academy's curriculum. During the past 20,000 years, Shrek Academy's education had been rather lacking in diversity, mainly focusing on subjects related to soul masters, and during a certain period, subjects related to soul engineers were also offered. However, with the invention and popularization of battle armor, these soul engineer subjects were gradually made redundant. Ling Zichen suggested that aside from nurturing soul masters, Shrek Academy had to develop talented individuals in all fields. If Shrek Academy could cultivate a more diverse range of talent, then their alumni would take up posts in all fields all over the continent, and the chances of a tragedy like the Shrek City bombing being repeated would be significantly lower. Following a discussion held during a Sea God's Pavilion meeting, Shrek Academy decided to take Ling Zichen's suggestion on board. During the next enrollment period, Shrek Academy was going to broaden its student intake to include those with lackluster soul master aptitude, but made up for it with intelligence. This was the basis upon which Ling Zichen's research institute was founded, and it was owned by both the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy, thereby allowing it to draw upon resources from both organizations. Of course, Ling Zichen was the one in charge of the research institute. The institute was situated deep underground and was connected with the sanctuary beneath the Sea God's Lake. As a perfectionist, Ling Zichen had ensured that the research institute was built to withstand attacks on par with the power of eternal heaven, and even though it had cost an enormous amount of money to make a vision a reality, this was definitely the most impregnable research institute in the entire federation. After passing through a few metal doors, Ling Zichen rode an exclusive elevator downward. After over ten minutes and two elevator changes, she finally arrived in a massive underground laboratory. If Tang Wulin had followed her to this place, he would have definitely been astonished by what he saw. This laboratory belonged exclusively to Ling Zichen, and currently, it was a complete mess with uncommon metals and different parts strewn all over the place. Atop a giant bench at the center of the laboratory sat a silver soul missile, which was slightly smaller than the average soul missile. Its silver shell was very streamlined, and the front third of it was translucent with a light source glowing inside it. The light 1080 source positive circulation caused in the missile, and that was the source of the missile's power. The rear half of the missile had been opened up, and some extremely intricate and tiny parts could be seen within. Ling Zichen's lips twitched slightly as she to herself. I wonder how he'd react if he finds out I'm taking eternal heaven apart. They all thought I was fortifying the lab to defend against external attacks, but it's actually because I'm afraid this thing might explode. Well, it looks like it won't have a chance to explode here anymore. Now then, let me see if I can remember how to reassemble this thing. Tang Wulin had always known that Ling Zichen was insane, but this degree of insanity would most likely bring even him to his knees. Over an hour later, Ling Zichen finally completed the reassembly of the missile, and a triumphant smile appeared on her face. All done. Am I impressive or what? If I had enough resources, perhaps I really would be able to create another eternal heaven. She carefully stowed the missile into her storage cell tool as she spoke, and only then did she have a sigh of relief. He must be growing impatient, but I have to make him wait a little longer. Hey, I bet he has no idea what I'm going to do with his blood. Ha ha ha, if I succeed with the experiment, I'll be striking gold. She made her way over to one side of the laboratory as she spoke, then pressed a very well concealed button, upon which a metal door instantly opened to reveal an independent space. In contrast with the messy laboratory, this independent room was very pristine and orderly. It was only around a third the size of the laboratory outside, but all types of intricate devices were being stored within it. At the very center of the room was a huge vat that seemed to have been constructed from glass. The vat was full of transparent liquid and all types of tubes, and within the liquid was a person. This wasn't any particular person. In fact, it didn't even have any facial features and was completely life. Ling Zichen chuckled to herself. I wonder what a coin of Tang Wulin will be like. Once I successfully create one, I'll be able to abuse it as I please. Hey, Tang Wulin really was growing rather impatient. It had been two hours since Ling Zichen's departure, and if she had gone anywhere else, he would have already gone to find her. However, the defenses of the laboratory were so formidable that even with his power, it would take him a long time to force his way in. As such, all he could do was wait. Finally, the elevator door opened, and Ling Zichen emerged from within. Chapter 1790. What's the big deal? She currently wore a serious expression, and as soon as she caught sight of Tang Wulin, she said, "Let's go." Tang Wulin's lips twitched slightly upon hearing this. Was she not going to provide an explanation for her prolonged absence? In any case, this wasn't the time to be asking questions. Time was of the essence. Thus, the two of them emerged from the academy and arrived beside the Sea God's Lake. Tang Wulin turned to Ling Zichen and said, "Please." Pardon me, I'm going to need to hold your hand from here. Ling Zichen rolled her eyes in response. What's the big deal? We've already hugged. Holding hands is nothing. She offered her hand to Tang Wuling in a casual manner as she spoke. Tang Wuling cleared his throat in an awkward manner as a resigned look appeared on his face. He grabbed onto her hand, and soul power enveloped both of their bodies as they plunged into the sea gods like together. Soon, they arrived beside the secondary tree of life, and the very earth in the distance seemed to be tremoring as bursts of loud rumbling rang out in the distance. The limit had detected Tang Wuling's aura, and they quickly arrived on the scene. The fact that Ling Zichen was with him was a clear indication that they had brought eternal heaven with them. Tang Wuling hurriedly asked, What's the situation like? Count Dutcher replied, The situation is currently still quite stable. After some discussion, the control center has decided to constantly bombard the array. In doing so, we'll be expending a lot of artillery fire, but they'll also have to expend energy to maintain the array. At the moment, it doesn't look like the Blood River Godslayer array is showing any signs of moving, and it doesn't seem to be sufficiently stable to be moving anywhere. Either Tang Wulin was quite relieved to hear this. That's good to hear. Let's go to the control center, Senior Cow. Zichen, you stay here for now. All of the other seniors will protect you, and we'll take you over to the control center later. Even though Eternal Heaven had arrived, further planning was required to determine how to use it. In the abyssal passageway, purplish black light was surging incessantly above the giant altar. Yet the figure standing at the very center of the
opening up a new abyssal passageway. The abyssal plane had to lend the Holy Spirit cult sufficient assistance to complete the Blood River God Slayer array. This was a mutually beneficial deal for both sides. The abyssal plane wanted life energy, while the Holy Spirit cult wanted death energy, so there was no conflict of interest. The Holy Spirit cult had calculated that even though it would cost them greatly to open a new abyssal passageway, the assistance they would receive from the abyssal plane would more than make up for that. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit cult could use the abyssal army to create more widespread slaughter, thereby generating more death energy that they could absorb while concealed in the shadows, enhancing themselves while taking minimal risk. Of course, the most important benefit that the Holy Spirit cult could derive from this deal was the creation of the Blood River God Slayer array. This was a path for evil soul masters to attain. The order that had been discovered after countless generations of research by the Holy Spirit cult, if they couldn't abide by the natural order to climb their way to the top, then they would just have to defy the natural order and walk the path of evil to its very conclusion. If they could successfully create a god on the back of ten million sacrifices, then the god created would be the ultimate god of evil. If the dual plane was still under the protection of the divine realm, then this would be nothing more than a suicidal pursuit. But with the divine realm gone, new possibilities arose, including the possibility to create another divine realm. Thus, following a discussion with the abyssal plane, a plan was established. The Holy Spirit cult made the first show of sincerity by helping the abyssal plane open up a new passageway. But in exchange, the abyssal plane had to help them complete the Blood River God Slayer array. Of course, they didn't tell the abyssal plane that this array was meant to create a god. They had merely told the abyssal plane that the array possessed incredible defensive properties would minimize casualties on their side. Once demon sovereign attained godhood, infernal emperor and ghost emperor would follow, and with the god of evil already in existence, it would be far easier to create the Blood River God Slayer array again. The Holy Lord was restricted by this plane, so there was virtually no way that he could descend upon the Dulu continent. As such, even if the abyssal army were displeased by the Holy Spirit cult's deception, they wouldn't be able to do anything in the face of the god of evil. At the end of the day, the Holy Spirit cult would be in complete control. And judging from how things had progressed thus far, the abyssal plane was a very trustworthy partner in crime. After a few quasi god level sovereigns descended upon this plane, they immediately assisted demon sovereign in completing the array. This was why Tang and Arahang had only seen powerful beings from the Holy Spirit cult, but none from the abyssal plane earlier. Enveloped within the purplish golden light, the true appearance of demon sovereign had been revealed. She was a stunning woman who appeared to be in her thirties, and both her figure and looks were impeccable. At the center of her forehead was a purplish golden crystal that was radiating scintillating light. And even though there weren't any soul rings around her, her aura was elevating at an astonishing rate. Layers of rippling light occasionally appeared over the surface of her skin. And even though the constant bombing was still continuing outside, the Blood River God Slayer array remained completely resolute. A terrifying aura swirled through the air, constantly stacking on top of itself layer upon layer to create an explosive effect. But this had no bearing on the abyssal creatures inside. The Black Sovereign slowly opened her eyes as she sat beside the altar, revealing a pair of gleaming eyes that resembled black gems. She took a glance up at Demon Sovereign, and a barely detectable cold smile appeared on her face. She then closed her eyes again and focused on injecting her abyssal energy into the array. At the control center, I suggest we initiate the bombing right away. There were only four people in the control center, namely Chen Zinji, Uguanzi, Tang Wuling, and Kao Daja, and the one who had spoken was Tang Wuling. If this Blood River God Slayer array could move, then it would be like a mobile fortress, and it would have attacked us long ago. The fact that it still hasn't moved indicates that there are several possible scenarios. Perhaps the Blood River God Slayer array still hasn't fully taken shape. Perhaps the array has already accumulated enough power to elevate its overseer to godhood, or perhaps there are more powerful abyssal creatures that have yet to arrive on our continent. Regardless, it's in our best interest to take care of the array as soon as possible. Uguanzi nodded in agreement. I concur. As do I, Chen Zinji chimed in. The issue now is how we're going to use eternal heaven. Due to the special nature of God's missiles, they affect everything around them, and all powerful beings that are above a certain level will be able to detect it. If it does get discovered, I'm worried that the abyssal creatures will intercept it in the dare in a kamikaze attack, thereby preventing the full extent of eternal heaven's power from reaching the Blood River God Slayer array. Tang Wuling said, That is indeed a possibility, and that's why I've brought the head researcher of the Tang sect with me. She says that she's confident in her ability to maximize eternal heaven's power. How about we invite her to discuss this matter with us? Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.